In order to decide how much uh, RTV we need to mix up, what I've done is filled the, the molds full of rice, and then I'm going to dump it into a, a mixing bucket that I'll use for mixing my RTV, and it'll show me a level that I need to pour and fill the bucket with as I'm getting prepared to mix the RTV. Really scientific procedure. That's the line we'll shoot for when we're filling it with the RTV. Now, uh, what we're going to do is get these uh, pieces sprued up and ready to pour the rubber in. I'm using uh, a sticky wax to attach to the part that's going inside of the mold. And this sticky wax will hold the, uh, the piece in place as I'm pouring the rubber into the mold. But you have to be careful to not pour the rubber directly onto the piece because it's just a, a very fragile uh, support structure for the part there. Here I am melting the sticky wax and then I'm almost kind of like uh, mounting a candle to a, you know, a hard surface. This is a small uh, spoke shave I made years ago. It has some scrimshaw work on the top of the spoke shave. And believe it or not, uh, after I removed the, the master from the mold when I cut it open, you can see the scrimshaw registration uh, in the mold. So it picked up that small detail the RTV did. This is one of the commercially available mold frames that we talked about in, in some of the, the earlier videos. So this guy's ready to pour. Yeah, we're going to take a, another, another part and mount it up. To, we're going to have one uh, commercial mold, and then we're going to have three or four of the uh, round tapered PVC molds. So what I'm going to do is take this little bone uh, handle that had been scaled down from some handles I did a few years back, and uh, we'll mount it up there. And same thing, we got it mounted with the sticky wax. Now we put the uh, tapered PVC with the big end down and, met and push it into the clay to seal it. And uh, so this guy now is ready to uh, pour the RTV into its mold. There's a few other parts that I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and make up a, a bunch of the PVCs uh, as I go through this video. But we'll, we'll only show, you know, pouring uh, just a couple of them. Okay, this is a batch that's ready to uh, to be poured. I got the commercial frame and four other PVC molds, and uh, we're going to mix up the uh, the rubber here and fill them up with the RTV. The, the mix ratio on this particular RTV is ten to one by weight. So what I'm doing is. Uh, Remember, I marked the uh, the receiving bucket to show me what level to pour it to. 
from the measurements we took with the with the rice. So once I get the RTV part one poured in there to the proper level, then we're going to uh, add the uh, the catalyst or, or the hardener. So now what I do at this point, I, I notice the weight of the scale. I had teared out the scale, and I know the exact weight of the part one of the RTV. So what I'll do is uh, from that measurement, I will divide it by 10, and that's how much weight I'm going to need of the hardener. So these ratios, 10 to 1, are fairly critical. I mean, you, you, got, you can be off a little, but uh, you try to adhere to it as closely as you can. Okay, it's it's stirring time now uh, to mix the, the black catalyst with the uh, the base of the RTV. I guess I could fast forward this thing, but I don't want to give the, the false impression of, of it being a real fast and easy operation. So I'm just going to keep recording uh, the whole stirring process. And I'll give you a few intermediate shots of what it looks like. But uh, once you get the black... Uh, hardener and the white uh, base completely mixed, you should have a, a very consistent gray, kind of a battleship gray uh, color for the for all of the uh, RTV. You need to pay attention not to have any uncured or RTV in the bottom of the the bucket that hasn't received the uh, the hardener. This, this is not a very large batch by all means, but uh, stirring this uh, high viscosity RTV can, and can uh, give you some good cramps in your, in your hand there if you hadn't done it in a while. But he's just about, uh, just about mixed up good. And the next, uh, the next step in the operation after we've got it thoroughly mixed, we're going to place it under the vacuum chamber of the, the vacuum unit you see to the left in the photograph or in the video. And uh, what you need to watch for, this vacuum unit, uh, and I think I put a little shot on Instagram, but this vacuum unit, you should be able to put a little cup of water under the bell jar and turn it on, and within less than a minute, it should make that water boil violently. That's kind of an indication of the strength of your vacuum unit and whether this is going to you know, do the job. Now, when I turn the vacuum on here, watch the, uh, I know the bucket's pretty dirty, but you should be able to see the RTV start rising once it gets around 24, 25 uh, units of vacuum. And uh, you'll see it rising in the bucket. And uh, this bucket is just barely big enough. The, the RTV will normally rise about five times the volume. See, it, it's coming up now. And it's just about peaked out as far as the vacuum. In just a second, when it reaches maximum vacuum, it's going to fall. I think it... Yeah, it fell. It's, it's kind of hard to see in the dirty bucket, but it, I was indicating with the glove my, my level. 
And looking at the uh, RTV at this point, it is just absolutely, there's no smooth texture or consistency to it. It's just like it's, it's just surrounded with all kind of little air, air bubbles. But at this point, when it rises and falls, uh, it should be pretty well degassed. The viscosity at this point of the mixed RTV is, is kind of like, I don't know, cold syrup, I guess. But what what I'm trying to do here is keep the uh, the mold cocked so that when the uh, string of rubber starts entering the mold, I want it to enter and touch the side of the, uh, the inside wall of the PVC pipe. I don't want the rubber going directly on top of the... Uh, the part, because we indicated earlier, that little uh, adhesion of the sticky, uh, tacky glue, sticky glue to the part is not the strongest thing in the world. So once you get a certain level of the rubber rising up and surrounding the lower, say, third of the part, then you can get away with pouring it on top. But I always like to pour it on the sides and let it rise and flow up over the piece that we're making the mold of. You got to be careful, not let one big glob come out of there you know, to, to fall on top of the part. Okay, I think this is only two I'm on a video as far as the pouring. I'm just going to leave the rest of them alone. Now, this is the next day, this shot here, there was some leftover rubber in the mixing bucket. And uh, it's pretty easy to clean up. You just reach in and grab it and yank it out. Uh, the skins that I'm cutting away right now was what was on the side of the, the mixing bowl. And uh, you can... You can save this rubber even after it's cured, and when you make larger molds, you can use this cured uh, RTV as a filler. As I said earlier, the only thing that the RTV will stick to is itself. So you can cut up little chunks and use this as filler, say on a larger larger mold, and uh, save you some some virgin uh, RTV, so this can, in, in effect, sort of be recycled. Okay, this is, again, the next day, again, uh, we got five moles that were poured, and what we're going to do in the remaining portion of the video, we're going to open these guys up and uh, get them out of the mold frame, and then we're going to cut them open to remove the part. So we're going to do the, uh, I don't know, we're opening the big one first, but uh, we'll probably cut one of the round ones as, in the first cut, as I remember. This, this is a new technique for me, kind of like the old, this old Tony, I guess. Uh, a lot of guys do this on their YouTube videos where they'll shoot the video and then go in and dub in the sound, which is what I'm doing now. So I, I hope I hope it works. Uh, I hope the quality is uh, uh, sufficient. If it's not, uh, I'm sure I'll hear about it, and I'll try to rectify and, and do a better job next time. But this is uh, this is kind of a learning curve on this process for me, the uh, dubbing in the sound. So this guy is out of the frame now, and he's ready to be cut open. So before we do that, let's look through what it looks like to open up uh, one of the round PVC molds. You just, just pull it off the clay. 
start peeling off your uh, your drippage and all. And what I always like to do is on the uh, first, I have to remove the clay from the bottom and get it down to the rubber. Uh, the next thing you'll see is I'll go into the top of the mold and cut a just a little chamfer around the inside. And the only reason for that is it, it gives you a little easier uh, entry point when you start uh, breaking the mold loose from the inside of the, the PVC pipe. And it makes, it makes the mold go in and out of the, uh, the canister a little bit easier. Okay, so I've got rid of all the, the clay, or, you know, 90% of it. This is where I'm going to go in and cut the, uh, the chamfer around the uh, top of the rubber. Okay, at this point, that mold will not come out of there. I mean, you can beat on it all day long, and it will not come out there. It's a tapered, remember, it's a tapered insert. So using water as a, as a lubricant, and this is a little special tool I made. I, I don't know, you can kind of call it a pointed butter knife, but it's a real, it's not a sharp uh, utensil, but it was made out of this, uh, these, uh, as you see there, it was made out of, these tools, I think they were used for sculpting or not sure exactly what they are. So by pushing it down there, I've, I've bent that tool and put it in a handle. It gives me some leverage. So by keeping it lubricated with the water, I can work it, work it say around going a little bit deeper each time. And uh, unless you got a really big mold, uh, these smaller molds, you can, by doing the top and the bottom, you can uh, pretty much get it. To where it come out of there so now i'm working on the bottom doing just running it around uh and it's just basically breaking loose uh, where the rubber had kind of stuck and you see it just took you know one one good tap and wrap and uh, it just popped right out of there you see the taper on the mold and uh so this guy we're uh, we're gonna cut him open first and what I'm doing, you, you probably can't see it in the video, but before I poured the rubber, I put two little indentations in the clay. And what it formed is there's two little positive uh, embossments on the bottom of the rubber. So the reason I did that, and when I made those two reference marks, that tells me how the part is oriented in the mold when you're using uh, opaque uh, RTV where you can't see your part inside. Uh, so it gives me a reference of how that part's oriented. Now, in this particular part here that we're cutting open, it's, uh, it's kind of a symmetrical part, so it really was not necessarily required. Uh, but when you've got thick parts or thin parts that are orientated, you, you want to like to know how they're uh, lay it inside that rubber. Plus, uh, you, you allow yourself a you know quarter, eight to a quarter of an inch of the yellow sprue material when you mount a part, and that gives you a little starting point to follow down and get your uh, your mold divided up. There we've we've gotten down to the the end of the sprue that was holding the handle. And uh, again, it's not critical on this because it's symmetric, you know, the part is symmetrical. But now, as, you, as you're pulling and, and keeping pressure on the mold as you're cutting it, if, if you look closely, you might be able to pick it up. But if you stretch the RTV, strong enough to separate it, it will it will tear, but before it tears, you will see a white frosted color on the rubber that says, hey, I'm about to break loose. So you kind of focus on that white frosted area as you're stretching the mold, and that's where you want to focus with your, your knife. You see the white across there? So I can go right across there and follow that white 
and uh, it'll just it'll break loose, cut clean there. Now, some of these molds, uh, regardless of whether the the round PVC mold or the mold frame or uh, the uh, you can you can leave that last cut where I actually cut that mold open and it came into two parts. Uh, you can leave it like a butterfly if you want to, and it, it helps registration a little bit. So this guy is cut the parts out of there, and he's ready to shoot some wax in there. So I think what we're going to do next is uh, take that square mold, I'm sorry, the rectangle, the mold frame here, and cut that piece out of there. There's a spoke shave. Uh, it's actually a, a miniature uh, traditional type spoke shave. There, there is a commercially available device that a lot of the jewelers will use. You, it has an alligator clip on one end, and you can clip it to one half of the mold and pull the mold, and it will keep tension, uh, constant tension, with that uh, alligator clip anchored to, say, the back of the workbench or whatever. So it uh, it makes it a little easier to uh, to cut, and uh, but on a mold this size, it's it's not really a, a that big of a, a problem to keep keep it opened up and separated. The problem is not to cut your thumb. Rather than, than trying to do just an absolutely straight slice down the, the mold when you're cutting them open like this, it's a good practice to uh, do some zigzags. Go to the right a little bit and back to the left. And what that does, that builds peaks and valleys on both sides of the, uh, the mold, which they, they act as a registration for it to, to go back and, and lock back in. So... It's, it's not necessarily cutting it exactly straight uh, in cases. I've zigzagged off right and left as far as an eighth of an inch or so on the vertical line. Having, having watched this process where we've, we've cutting open two molds the, the old-fashioned way, so to speak. And this is when, in the early days, when, when the jewelers used vulcanized molds, it, it was the same thing. They had to cut these molds open. And, uh, but it, it gives you a little more appreciation for being able to use the, what I call the Don Wood tapered box that we had looked at in the previous video. Uh, by using that box and, and uh, it being a two-day process, pouring half the mold and then pouring the second half, uh, the advantage of it is once you get the, the two halves of the mold poured day two, you take your part out and there's no cutting involved. So each one of these types of mold frames and uh, molds, there's... Uh, pros and cons associated with each one of them.
you can you can see the black scrimshaw that was scrimshawed into the body of uh, this piece of imitation ivory. And uh, again, it actually picked up the depth uh, of the scrimshaw in the uh, uh, in the part. These are right handy little spoke shaves. Uh, you know, I'll probably uh, once I shoot some waxes, I'll probably cast a few of them in bronze or brass or something because uh, I actually have a full size shave like this. It was done by come out of a pattern shop. Uh, and it's it's pretty effective. Uh, you think I'm always being wood, but there's no reason it couldn't be cast and made out of brass. Okay, we got him cut, and he knows I didn't cut him completely out with my left of butterfly, so that the the mold was still registered, and uh, it's it's passed apart, so it's not going to cause any problems. But it will it will assist in keeping the two halves of the mold uh, better registered. So if you're not asleep yet, uh, we got uh, what we're going to do is we take these these two molds and we're going to take them over to the wax wax injector and squirt some hot wax in them. Okay, here's the uh, the molds we're going to shoot. There's the wax pot. It has been modified to to get rid of the old bimetallic thermostat and it's got electronic electronic digital. Uh, temperature controller on it so we're going to shoot this is a mold i made last week it's a, a pull knob for a, a workbench and you can see the, the wax uh shooting up out of there here's the uh, the knob or i'm sorry the handle we just shot shot some wax in it and the third one we're going to shoot is the uh, uh the spoke shave here Okay, they're all uh, they're all full of wax. They're uh, they're cooled down. So let's open them up and uh, see what it looks like. The little knob, uh, this bowl here had a core in it. That's the white piece that that keeps you that makes you have a round impression in that in that pull knob uh, discussion. And there's just tap that guy, just jump right out of there. There's the uh, the chisel handle. Pretty good injection on that. And let's see what the spoke shape looks like. Okay. Three for three. That's not a bad shot. So I hope you enjoyed it and uh, you learned some new techniques. If you have any questions or comments, give me some uh, feedback there and I'll try to answer any questions. And, uh, I'll try to keep these videos coming out if there's uh, enough interest in them. So, that's all, folks. Hope you learned something new. Y'all come back again, you hear?